Hey, what's up? This is Andy, and uh, how are y'all doing? All right, um, I hope you're doing great, and I hope you're all ready to go and uh, got your coffee and your notes prepared uh, because you know we're going to go through some pretty awesome content um, in this video. Okay, so um, uh, just to give you a bit of a heads up, you know this video might go for quite some time, but uh, trust me, you're going to get some you know pretty valuable stuff out of this. All right, so yeah, so have your coffee ready, have your notepad ready, and uh, make sure you get some lots of great notes. Okay. So um, pretty much as you can see, you know, this video is all going to be about niche sites, right? And I'm, I'm going to offer you a blueprint on uh, how you can create some pretty crazy niche sites and uh, start generating those uh, passive incomes, okay? So again, this is going to be a mini course and uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so um, pretty much, you know, what we're going to be going through is, uh, for starters, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to build a winning niche site, okay? So um, it's not it's just a matter of, you know, building up a site and um, hoping for the best, you know, there are certain requirements that you need uh, to make it, you know, profitable, alright? Uh, next part is to rank your niche sites, okay? So, uh, as you're aware, you know, if you're not going to be able to drive traffic to your niche site, then uh, it's pretty much pointless, okay? So, you're going to need a way to get people to your site so you can actually, you know, start making money, which leads us to the monetization of the site. So, uh, yeah, so uh, pretty simple stuff. I mean, uh, I'm going to cover as much as I can and uh, with the time frame that we've got, all right? So uh, let's just, yeah, let's just go to the next slide. Whoops. So what exactly is a niche site? So these are, you know, this is for everyone out there that has no clue what I'm talking about. Um, a niche site is pretty much just a site that's uh, very specific on a certain topic, okay? So, um, I mean, that's what niche stands for, you know, uh, a specific topic. So let's say, you know, if you wanted to build a site around dog training, and then that's what your site's going to be about, okay? So... Uh, for people that want to learn more about dog training, they're going to look it up on a search engine and um, and hopefully they'll land on your website, okay? And from that website, that's where you're going to actually monetize it and um, and make money from it, okay? So, uh, again, it's just a resource for potential buyers. So, um, you know, like I said, it's just a bunch of information for your buyers to kind of make a buying decision whether they actually want to go through or not. Um, think of an example as like a, a review site, okay? So, I mean, if you ever wanted to kind of buy something but you weren't too sure and you wanted to do a quick Google search to see, you know, what other people are thinking about it, uh, that, my friend, is a niche site, okay? So, what well, I mean, uh, yeah, so generally, you know, people write up reviews on specific products and, uh, and you know, giving all the good stuff and all the benefits and pretty much um, send you your way to an affiliate link, right, which is their affiliate link. So, you know, uh, it kind of helps uh, the potential buyers to decide whether they need to buy it or not. And if they do, um, the website owner gets some commissions, okay? So that's that's the main goal of a niche site. It is search engine dependent, so um, we're not going to be really playing around with any kind of paid marketing or you know paid advertising or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, we're purely relying on Google, okay? So you know, if your site's not ranking on Google, then um, you're going to be struggling to kind of pull in the traffic, which is you know how you're going to pretty much make your money from, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter whether you build a small website or a big website. Generally, I, I personally prefer building bigger websites, although it takes a, a bit longer to actually create. But um, it's just, you know, it's it's more protected in terms of um, Google's algorithms, which I will go through in, a, you know, further down the track. But, uh, yeah, generally, you know, I, I like to build mine semi-big. But, uh, yeah, so just, you know, it, it can go either way. You can have, a, you know, a few pages website just for your specific niche, and that's more than enough, okay? Um, it's really great because it's a very low budget entry so I mean you don't have to pay you know hundreds of hundred dollars just to get started uh, you pretty much all you have to do is just you know pay for domain hosting and um, and any you know bits and pieces to add on and you're pretty much good to go uh, it's really easy to set up which you know I really love uh, you know you don't need some all these kind of technical skills you know just a bit of knowledge and a bit of action and you're good to go and then uh, best of all it is on autopilot, okay? So, you know, once your site's up and ranking, uh, you generally don't have to worry about it so much anymore. Uh, you know, especially if you're ranking number one, beautiful, you know, you're gonna be getting most of the traffic from the search engines. So, yeah, so that's uh, just a brief uh, overview of what niche site's about, and um, and there, yeah. let's uh, talk about what we actually have to uh, expect, okay? so. Uh, again, you know, it, it will require a lot of work, so, you know, don't get me wrong, it's not going to be just a push of a button, right? Um, you know, you're going to have to do some 
put in some effort and uh, put in some time. And saying that, you know, it does take a bit of time, a bit of patience to actually get it working. So um, you can't, you know, expect your your um, niche shot to be ranking just overnight. You know, it just doesn't happen. Um, again, you, you can't expect to become rich overnight either. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of like groundwork and uh, and you really have to kind of build like a multi, you know, a handful of niche shots before you actually see, you know, massive income coming in. But, you know, it's a really great place to get started and uh, and get your feet wet for affiliate marketing, okay? So, yeah, so, I mean, I don't mean to scare you, but let's just keep it really simple, okay? So, uh, going through this video, I'm just going to make it as simple as I can, and I'm going to break it down to seven steps, okay? And, and, and that's all it really is, you know? Uh, a lot of people tend to overly complicate um, building niche sites and trying to rank for it, but really, it's just, yeah, if you, as long as you keep it simple and just kind of tweak it around and, you know, and it really depends on what kind of niche you're getting into as well, but... I mean that that's gonna fall into um, the first two steps, but yeah, I mean just just as long as you kind of have an open mind and uh, willing to kind of test and tweak, you'll be fine. Okay, so I mean these are the seven steps, and uh, yeah, in this video I'm just gonna go through each of them. So the very number one first step is your niche research. Okay, uh, a lot of people tend to overlook this section because you know they think it's not important, but it very well is. All right, um, it. Could potentially be the make or break of your whole niche site, and so it's really important to get you know proper ground and uh, support to actually work on. Okay, so for starters, you know generally you just want to kind of come up with your own interests. See, you know what what kind of information that you want to write about, or you know what 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 do you think is a cool idea? Okay, and then just jot it down. You know you want to write down a whole bunch of lists on um, all these ideas, and then um, next you're going to actually break down that list by going through you know your market audience uh, it's really important that you do have a big enough market otherwise you know you're pretty much building your website for nothing right if you're if um, like 10 people decide to search it every month that's not enough to kind of get your um, to get your re recover your costs back right uh, I mean yeah you know if you, you want a big enough market so that you can actually you know, profit from it right and uh, I mean that's the name of the game um, another another thing to keep in mind is whether the market is a buying market. Okay, a lot of times people get into all sorts of niches, and um, and you know, like let's say for example a recipe niche. I'm not saying that it's not a buying market, but you know, generally people are searching for recipes. Um, they're not looking to buy a recipe book, right? Um, they probably just want the one-off um, recipe just so they can get started and cook that meal, and uh, not really thinking about you know buying any kind of books or equipment. Okay, so. That's another thing to keep in mind. So you want to make sure that you uh, research enough to understand that okay, you know, this market does buy. You know, they do pull out the credit cards and they're willing to, willing to purchase. Um, and then yeah, and you just kind of pretty much go with that. Uh, the next part is actually products to promote. Okay, so I mean, again, you know, if you're building a niche site and you don't have any products to promote, it's kind of a waste. Although you kind of probably could you know, bend a few things and go through different angles and uh, and find ways to actually promote it. But in this case, you know, I just want to keep it simple and uh, and you want to try to look for a product that you can actually promote. All right. And then lastly, it's just, you know, information. All right. Uh, depending if you're building a big site or a small site, you want to make sure you have enough information to actually write about. Okay. If you're going to go to something that's so obscure and, uh, and it's really hard to kind of research the information to actually write about, then I probably wouldn't waste my time on it, and I'll just move on to the next um, next idea. Okay, again, you know there are tons and tons and tons of niches that you can actually get into. So don't think that you're you know just because you found one that you think it's good, but you know it doesn't. It, you, but it's not a buying market. But you really like the niche. Uh, you know you probably want to move on. Or if you can't find a product to promote, or there's not enough information about it, just just move on. You know, like I said, there's heaps and heaps of niches. So. There's no point trying to get your head wrapped around the one niche when there are plenty out there. So yeah, so some these are some of the useful sites that I use to actually uh, go about my market research. Okay, so as you can see, Google Google is going to be your best friend. Uh, you know, pretty much Google is like god of the internet. You pretty much get you on know, anytime you need any kind of information, Google's going to be your best bet. Okay, so even just something as a simple Google search to see some kind of ideas. Um, so be it. 
Uh, affiliate Marketplace is also a really great place as well. So this is for both digital and physical. So um, I'm just gonna I'll jump over to my um, my web browser here, and uh, and let's just go through some of the examples. Okay. So again, this is just Google. So any kind of information that you need. Again, like like I said, you know Google's gonna be your best friend. But uh, over here is, is ClickBank. So ClickBank's a digital marketplace for uh, affiliate products. Okay. So um, it's a really great place to actually find out some great niches, and um, it's also a great way to find out whether it's a buying market or not. So if you head over to Marketplace, you'll see a whole bunch of categories on the left here. Okay, so choose one that you find that's interesting to you, and then um, and pretty much just go through it. So let's just go to, let's say let's go through games, all right, and see what what's available. So pretty much what we're actually looking for is the gravity. Okay, so gravity is pretty much, just a really layman terms is how well it's selling. Okay, how hot the product actually is. And if other affiliates are actually making money from this product, then you know it's going to be a buying market. Okay, so you're pretty much leveraging off um, other people's um, resources. Okay, so again, like I said, you know, it's a really great place. So let's say, for example, uh, this is a gaming guide for World of Warcraft. Okay, so... Actually, it's a whole bunch of other games as well, but maybe we we'll want to go actually more something more specific and uh, actually see from there. But I mean, you just want to go by and see. Okay, this one's got 110. So 110 is a huge gravity. You know, anything above 20 is pretty much a good buying market. So um, a lot of these is a really good market. As you can see, they're all like kind of 40s. Uh, this one's got five. So maybe this game's not not so great, or maybe the product itself is not so great. Okay, so. Um, it's not always the case. It's not you can't really kind of determine whether it's going to be exactly a buy market if it's a low gravity, but you know it's a good base to actually go about. Okay, and um, pretty much you always want to go through all the products through ClickBank and see what kind of ideas that you can work with, and um, and uh, another great way to actually find out if there's products to sell as well. So it's kind of hitting you know uh, using hitting two birds with one stone. I think I believe that's the saying. Uh, let's head over to Amazon. So Amazon's are also and also another great place to look for niche ideas and uh, and see what what's available that you can actually promote as well. So I mean Amazon does have a um, associate program down the bottom here. So where are you? Become an affiliate. So you can become an affiliate for Amazon as well and pretty much promote anything that's on Amazon. And uh, and it's also a great place to get some ideas. So if you go by shop by apartment department, sorry, you know you'll have a whole bunch of categories you can choose from and look. Anything that sparks your interest, go for it. Okay, click on it and then um, and just do a quick Google search and see uh, you know what's actually selling. So let's say I'll just do um, World Warcraft, right? Another great way to actually find out whether it's a buying market is the advertising. And um, as you can see, there's only one advertising here. But if you see a lot of people advertising for a particular keyword or a particular niche, you know it's definitely a buying market because you know. Um, people are actually willing to uh, pay for these advertisements knowing that they're going to get money back okay so I mean, that's another great way uh, but obviously this particular keyword is probably not the best um, let's try something else let's try guide All right and let's see okay so I mean these are sponsored ads these are actually book bookstores and uh, they're actually paying for the advertise uh, for um, they're actually paying to actually get their their links out as well, so there are people advertising for it, but um, not so much. Okay, but that's just one example anyway. Um, the last site I actually want to show you, which is an awesome resource that I use quite a lot, is Dummies.com. Okay, and this place is uh, a gold mine for when it comes to actually doing niche research. Um, if you head over to shops, shop for books and more, uh, the idea of how dummies work is they do intense research when it comes to making these books. All right? I'm sure you've heard of dummies before and um, they don't just make any kind of book. All right, They want to make sure that uh, it's what people want or it's what people need. Okay, And then and then that's where they hire people to actually create those books to write the content and then that's when they sell it. Okay, So um, just because there's a whole bunch of different books, there's a lot of you know study and research involved into this and pretty much you're just leveraging off their resources. Okay, So again, you know, there's a whole bunch of categories that you can choose from. You know, choose whichever one that you want to look into and then uh, go from there. So yeah, so that's just uh, my little kind of goldmine go-to website when it comes to niche research. 
So uh, let's just head back to our slide. So yeah, so again, you know, just go through it. You want to actually check out other niche sites as well. So if you if you want to do like a a gaming niche, go out there and try to look for some um, gaming niche sites. All right, and see what they're selling and see what they're doing. Okay, if 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 their if their site look like they're doing really well, reverse engineer, you know, model off them and see you know how you can actually do it better than them. All right, so um, that's just another tip. So I'm just gonna get a glass of water. Alrighty, so step two. Step two is our keyword research, okay? And this is gonna be pretty much the make or break of your website. Um, this step, you know, step one and step two are pretty much crucial, okay? So if you do those two steps correctly, you're pretty much 80% there, okay? So um, I can't stress enough how important these two steps are. So really do take your time on it, but uh, let, let me go through on keyword research first, okay? So what, keyword, what keywords are is pretty much your customer search queries. So whatever they type up into Google, that's a key word, okay? And uh, it can consist of one word, or it can consist of you know five to six words. It doesn't matter. So generally, when it's it's you know longer than three or four words, it's actually called a long tail keyword, but it's still a keyword, <clears throat> okay? Um, how we actually go about keyword research is we want to actually look for how many monthly searches that term actually gets, all right? And um, generally, if there are lots and lots of searches, so anything more than, let's say, 10,000 searches a month, that is deemed very competitive, and I'd probably avoid that, okay? So, um, yeah, if you have if you have a term that's, you know, really competitive, you have, like, thousands and thousands of people searching for it, you'll generally find, like, these big companies usually ranking for it, and you don't want to go against them, okay? Um, I mean, I'm not saying that it's impossible to rank higher than these um, big brands. It's just going to be a lot of time wasted and a lot of resources, which we don't have time for, okay? We just want to make these web websites as quick as we can and rank them as fast as we can, okay? That's the main goal. And so, yeah. So, generally, we're trying to look for something that's at a smaller range. Um, so, in saying that, you know, long tail words are really great for um, for actually trying to rank for, okay? So, actually going for. Uh, so, having your niche is one thing, but then actually looking for the keywords to actually target is, um, it's, it's key, okay? So, if you can, let's say for example, you know, uh, again, you know, let's just use the gaming niche for as an example. Uh, instead of actually, you know, like I wrote before, World of Warcraft, a World of Warcraft guide, you can you can actually look for, you know, best World of Warcraft guide, okay? So that's a, a long tail keyword, and uh, generally it's gonna get a lot less searches because it's more, um, it's more obscure, right? It's more dialed in, more specific, okay? So less people are actually gonna type in, you know, best World of Warcraft guide than they would with just World of Warcraft. So um, that's what I mean by long tail keywords, and those are the kind of keywords that you actually want to target. You know, long tail keywords. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is to aim for buyers keywords. Okay, like like um, the example I did before with the recipes, right? If you're gonna type up, you know, cake recipes, that's not exactly a buying keyword, right? Because they just want information. Whereas if they were typing up, you know, let's say best recipe book okay they're actually trying to look for a book that they're willing to buy so see see how you know just adding a few words actually makes a whole big difference to what the actual search term is so um yeah so that's what really important when it comes to actually trying to ranking ranking for you know specific keywords and then um you want to make sure you check the competition of that keyword as well okay so um again you know as i mentioned before if you're competing against with you know big companies Big brands, I wouldn't generally bother and I'll just move on straight away. All right, I wouldn't even think twice about it. Because like I said, it's going to take up too much sources, too many source, resources, and uh, too much of your time to either bother with it. Okay, so yeah, so how do we actually come up with keyword ideas? Um, I mean, as much as, you know, as, as easy as this sounds, it's just pretty much common sense, all right? The, the only problem with common sense is it's not, sometimes it's not common enough. But uh, generally, you know, just kind of think about, you know, what would people actually type into if they wanted to, let's say, buy a book, okay? Uh, you know, just kind of use your brain, brainstorm it, write it all down, and um, and just, you know, try and come up with really great ideas. Otherwise, another great way to actually look for ideas is forums and Q&A websites, all right? You know, I found heaps and heaps of um, good keyword ideas just using forums alone, okay? And you know, some of these tools out there, 
even even those tools won't be able to find these kind of keywords that you know actual people ask on forums and Q A Q and A websites. All right, like um you know they, they'll ask specific questions and you'll see you, you know a few other people asking the same questions over and over again and that's when you know you've got a win of a keyword. Okay, so um that's that's another cool place to actually look for ideas. Um, I kind of already mentioned about uh, buying keywords. So by adding simple prefixes and suffixes, it changes the whole keyword into a buying keyword. Okay, which is really great. And uh, generally with prefixes, you know, if you add in best top or buy, well, obviously, you know, if they they're going to type in buy. They're already kind of pre-framed to buying. Um, you know, with suffixes, you can add solution, product, or review. So you know, if if they're looking for a specific product review, they actually want to learn more about it before they actually buy it. Okay, so Really important terms to add. Um, there's a whole bunch more, but this is just a few examples that are that are there anyway. Okay, uh, another great place to get some keywords is your Google Keyword Planner. Um, although I generally use my key Keyword Planner just to get some metrics and not so much about the ideas because it's uh, it is very narrow, but it's still you know it's still there anyway. Okay, and um, and also Google's related searches as well. So. Um, I'll show you. I'll, ju I'll jump over to my web browser again, and I'll show you quickly what I mean about uh, related searches. Okay, so back with World of Warcraft guide. Okay, uh, if you scroll all the way at the bottom here, you'll see related searches, and here you can see a whole bunch of um, new keywords that you can actually use. And these these related uh, searches are actual searches that other people have done. Okay, and so you know that it's really great for. Um, for great keywords to actually target. So let's say, you know, World of Warcraft guide for beginners. Maybe that's the keyword we actually want to go after. But we have to make sure that we check um, with our Google Keyword Planner to see whether it's worth actually going for. Okay, so uh, if you don't have a Google account, I suggest you to create one because there are so many different products you can actually use from Google that's free and, uh, and it's well worth it. Okay, so, um, so I'm, already, I'm already over at my Keyword Planner. I've already logged in. Uh, if you don't know how to get there, just Google Keyword Planner and it will, it will show up for you. It will be the first thing. Okay, so the very first thing you want to do is just look for a keyword idea. <clears throat> Let's say, for example, we wanted to find out how many searches we get for this particular keyword. I'm just going to copy that. I'm just going to plug it in. Pl plug it in here. And um, and let's just see you know, how many actually searches a month it actually gets. <clears throat> Uh, with targeting, generally I just keep it with the US. You can actually do globally if you wanted to, but let's just uh, let's just see you know how it is for the US for now. Okay. Uh, again, you can filter it. All of these filters you can actually do with inside, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Okay. So let's just get ideas. At first, it's going to show show you ad group ideas. Uh, we actually want to see keyword ideas. Okay. Um, and nothing's popping up at the moment. I don't know if my intent's lagging. <clears throat> oh, it's still loading. Okay, so it's taking a sweet time. Um, just bear in mind that Google Keyword Planner is actually used for people that want to pay ads. Okay, um, so it's not 100% accurate when it comes to actually monthly searches. Uh, you'll find that, you know, if you're ranking a number one spot, and let's say the monthly searches is like, let's say it's 2,000, sometimes you'll actually see you'll get more than 2,000 or less. So it's yeah, like I said, it's not completely accurate, but it's a pretty good indicator on um, how well that keyword actually fares. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it's taken awfully long. I'm not sure what's going on here at the moment, but uh, maybe I'm just gonna pause this video real quickly, and um, I just want to see what is actually going on. Okay, so uh, I'll I'm just gonna troubleshoot for a bit, and I'll get back. Okay, so yes, for some reason it was taking really long to load, and um, I mean, we are having thunderstorms outside at the moment, it, although, you know, we're, we're about to hit summer, uh, that's Australia for you, that's Melbourne for you, so um, nothing new, but anyway, uh, now that the stats are loaded up, uh, as you can see, World of Warcraft Guide for Beginners, alright, it's got a monthly search of 10, so that's really, really low, okay, so, um, yeah, I mean, feel free to actually build a website and uh, rank for that particular keyword. I'm sure it's going to be very easy as well, but uh, I wouldn't expect any kind of sales anytime soon, right? If it's going to only be 10 people searching it each month. Um, if you scroll further down, you actually see other kind of keywords that you can actually target. So, you know, maybe World of Warcraft Guide for Beginners was 
not so great, but World of Warcraft Beginner's Guide. So now we're talking, now we're getting 210, so still not the greatest, but you're having more than just, you know, 10 keywords, okay? So, 10 people, sorry. And yeah, so, um, yeah, you pretty much, you know, they'll give you a whole bunch of other ideas as well that you can actually use. Um, uh, just go through and actually see, you know, maybe, yeah, you can come up with a better one. So, let's say, for example, uh, you know, World of Warcraft Gold, I don't know what that is, but let's, uh, you know, maybe you can build a website, let's say, Play World of Warcraft, okay? It's got 600 searches, but maybe if you have like a CPA offer to actually create an account for World of Warcraft, um, that would be a pretty good offer to actually go for. Uh, let's see. See, World of Warcraft actually has, you know, almost half a mil on um, on searches, so that's definitely something you want to avoid. But you can see that um, there are other stats here, like competition and suggested bid. Uh, don't mistake in competition for, you know, how well you're going to actually rank for. Like I said, you know, Google Keyword Planner is originally for um, advertising. So, you know, uh, so, um, you know, this actual competition is how many people are actually advertising for that particular keyword. Okay, so, yeah, that's just keep in mind. And um, the suggested bid is how much they're willing to pay per click for that ad. Okay, so, I mean, for $4, you're actually willing to spend quite a bit for it. But as you can see, the competition is quite low. So if you see competition really high, so for example, you see this one is a high competition. That means a lot of people are trying to advertise for World of Warcraft games. Okay, even though the search is really low, there's a lot of people advertising for it. So that means that it's definitely a buyer's market. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's just a little example, but that's that's pretty much you know how you quickly use Keyword Planner. I mean, I mean, obviously, I didn't find the best kind of keywords, but generally, that's how you go through it. So you know, combine it with the power of related searches. And, uh, and just punch it in here and get these metrics. But generally, you know, what kind of searches you're after is between, you know, 1,000 to 4,000 for really low competition, okay? So, uh, 1,000 searches would be enough so you can kind of get traffic to it. Um, and 4,000 is just kind of like, yeah, your, your max where you kind of borderline. But really, you have to kind of check out Google's top 10 to actually see how well you fare. So, back to slides. So, yeah, so that's, that's how you use the keyword, keyword planner and searches. I'll just... Okay, so the next part of keyword research is the competitive analysis, okay? So you wanna make sure you check out Google's top 10, so the very first page, and actually see what kind of websites are actually ranking for that keyword. Okay, so um, if you see sites that are very strong, like you know authority websites, or big brands and companies, or e-commerce shops, uh, I generally wanna avoid that, okay? But if you see you know weak sites, like um, niche sites, QA sites, and forums and directories, those sites are really easy to rank pass and so you know and that that gives you a pretty good indicator that hey if other niche sites are able to rank for it i'm able to rank for it okay that's the kind of mindset you want but if you if you see the whole first page is authority sites i won't even bother okay and by authority sites i mean kind of like um any kind of big big sites okay and uh you'll be able to tell i've got this uh toolbar extension from google chrome which is called mozbar and it will tell you pretty much the authority of each website. So that's a really good indicator as well. So, um, you know, as soon as you turn that on, you can see, okay, you know, US Battle.net, they've got a domain authority. So DA stands for domain authority of 87. So that's huge. The highest, the max is 100. So that that's, you know, 87 out of 100, that's a pretty high authority, okay? And that particular page is, you know, 80. So that's, you know, that's, that's deemed authority's website. Again, you know, um, 66 is pretty high as well. Uh, anything above, like, uh, you know, 40, 50, that's, that, that I want to avoid. But uh, you can see this side here has got a domain authority of 38. So we know that, you know, we've got to rank at max the fifth position. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a, a way where you can actually use Google to kind of analyze. But again, you know, it's not always the case, okay? So as you can see, this one's got a domain of 38, domain authority of 8, and this particular page has 46. Uh, that's page authority, by the way, and that has 46. It's ranking higher than uh, you know a website with 87 and 63, and that's because maybe it could be you know it could be a whole bunch of different reasons. But uh, I'll talk about that more later during this video. Okay, so yeah, let's just continue on with our slides. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's pretty much you know what what I'll generally do. So uh, if I find a really good keyword that I want to use, I'll just jump on Google. I'll um, search for it and see, you know, what other websites are actually ranking for it, okay? And if I think that it's, 
that I can beat them, then that's when I'll go for it. All right, and uh, that's what will lead me to the, my next step, which is building the actual website. Okay, so now that I've found a winning niche, I found a winning keyword that I want to use, I want to build that website around that keyword. Okay, so um, building a website is really simple. All you have to do is buy a domain, get a hosting server, install WordPress, and then um, pretty much, you know, kind of make fancying it up your website. Okay, so when it comes to actually uh, getting a domain name, you want to make sure that it's a brandable domain name, okay? So um, I'll explain that you know in the next slide. Uh, WordPress as a CMS platform, so CMS is just content managing system. So um, generally, WordPress is my go-to. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, you, there are a few settings that you have to change within WordPress. Uh, you want to make sure that your website looks clean and professional. You know, and it, it really depends on your niche as well. So maybe with the gaming niche, you can actually make it really look fancy and graphical. Whereas, you know, maybe like if you're doing like a dental product or uh, any kind of like medical products, you want to make sure that it looks, you know, really neat, white, and, you know, that really kind of professional looking website, okay? And then uh, lastly, you know, a few plugins to do install as well. So when it comes to domain names, it's always best, it's good practice to actually keep it really short and simple. Okay, so, um, you know, something that's easy to remember. It's really catchy, but it has to be relevant to your topic, okay? So, um, I can't really think of anything on top of my head right now, but yeah, just uh, just keep those in mind. Uh, generally, I like to keep, I, I like to have a .com extension. Uh, you can do, you know, .net, you can do, you know, other um, locations. If you're if you're targeting, let's say, Australia, you can do .com.au or uh, UK, you know, it's up to you. But generally, I like to stick with the .com. Okay, um, now you're probably wondering EMD. Okay, so EMD stands for Exact Match Domain. Okay, and um, back then, so a couple of years back, you know, uh, EMDs were huge. Okay, so let's say um, we were aiming for a particular keyword. Let's say World of Warcraft Guide. All right, um, and it's a really good keyword to actually go after. What uh, most marketers would do was, was to actually look for that domain name. So they'll look for you know, World of, World of Warcraft Guide dot com. Okay, so that's the exact match to the keyword, and um, and what that does is Google actually gives it a little boost because it's that particular keyword. So um, and so it gives it a little boost and gives it extra weight to actually rank on top of Google. Uh, nowadays, it's a whole different ball game. Okay, so it still works in a way, yes, no, but it uh, it requires a whole different you know, strategy. Okay, so. Um, I will explain that later on. Uh, important plugins to have. Okay, so these are just a few plugins. Obviously, it's just a handful. These are it's a really good, um, uh, you know, a good base to actually go off. But the, for starters, Yoast and All in One. So they're actual SEO plugins. Uh, not to say that you know if you do have them, if you don't have them, you won't rank at all. It's just uh, the only the only reason why I do have these installed because it helps me kind of change my um my titles and meta description within Google. So you know whenever you actually type, let's say you know this this actual header here and this text here, this is the title that you can actually change within those plugins, and uh, this is the meta description. So it doesn't exactly <clears throat> with the meta description it doesn't exactly help with um your rankings, but it helps with click through rate. Okay, so. You know, we we're not always trying to focus on ranking our website. Uh, we also we want to make sure that you know, if your website does appear on, let's say, the first page, you want to make sure that person will click on it. Okay, so you want to make something that's um, alluring for them to actually click on. And so the the top two posts, the top two plugins, uh, will help you do that. Okay, uh, social sharing. So that's really important. So um, social sharing, are like you know, buttons on your website where they click on it, they'll like it, or you know, or they can share it. All that kind of stuff. Um, these are the two great plugins that I use. So Shareaholic and DigDig, they do a pretty good job. Um, related posts, related posts, uh, pretty much helps you with your um, interlinking, getting people to actually stay on your website. So uh, at the end of your post, you'll see um, you'll see other posts that are related to that post. Okay, so that's what pretty much this plugin does for you. Contact form, contact form seven is a plugin that helps people actually. Uh, contact you so um, it's pretty much you know if you have like a contact us uh, page and they click on it you know they can actually just fill out their detail and actually send you an email okay and that's and that's what this plugin does for you 
TablePress. TablePress is a really great plugin if you want to build tables for your website. Uh, let me give you an example of one. So if I head over to Post, I did an example further here. I think it was this one here. So if you want to do like a comparison um, chart or um, anything like that, you know, this is what it actually looks like. <clears throat> So um, yeah, this is I actually created this table using TablePress, and as you can see, you know you can actually image. Uh, this is the actual affiliate link. So if you actually click on it, that actually takes you to um, Amazon. Uh, you can actually describe it, your price range and quality. Okay, so you can do a whole bunch of other things with it, and you can add as many products as you can. And um, yeah, and that plugin is free, so it's pretty neat. Um, this is actually Shareaholic, so you can see these uh, little buttons here for your social sharing. So that's great. And then at the bottom here, you'll see you may also like. So this is related post. So that's uh, pretty much how uh, your plugins work. And uh, WP Smoosh it pretty much compresses your images. So if your if your website has a lot of images, um, this plugin will compress those images, make them a smaller size, so that your website will run faster. Okay. Uh, let's did I skip anything? And yeah, sorry. Yeah, and um. Again, with design, I, I kind of brush past this, but you want to make sure you have proper design for your website because it helps with um, building trust with your users as well. So if they land on a website and it's really thin and it looks really bland, um, you know, they don't, you know, people are very visual and um, they'll pick these things up and they'll probably just skip past your website, okay? So uh, whether if you don't know anything about designing, you can always outsource it, go on Fiverr, get something done for you. And uh, yeah, it's really simple. So where were we? Alrighty, so writing content. Step four. So now that we've got our website up and running, uh, we obviously need some content within it, okay? So step four is um, actually putting some pen to paper, okay? So uh, it's really important to have certain pages, and um, this goes without saying, okay? Having all your niche sites have these pages, it's uh, very crucial. Uh, how you actually go about researching for your information. So um, there is strategies to do that. Uh, your main article, your main article is your selling article. Okay, so uh, you want to make sure that it's properly um, set up, very engaging, and um, and it's pretty much you know the main article you actually want to rank for as well. Okay, your filler articles are just articles that kind of assist your main article. Okay, so they're they they're kind of articles where they bring in traffic but really small portions of traffic so like um, you might go for a really long tail keyword within your filler articles to get them to land on your website and then from that filler article you point them to your main article okay so uh, it helps with you know your link juice and it helps with um, uh, getting traffic to that main article as well and as always it's all about reader engagement okay uh, we're not actually writing the content for Google we're actually writing it for users and always keep that in mind so let's talk about the must-have pages, okay? So the must-have pages that you should have on all your niche sites are About Us and Contact Us, okay? So About Us pages are pretty much, pretty straightforward, you know? It's just about your website. Uh, about, if you, you can write, you can make it personal, and write, you know, who you are and, you know, what, what, what kind of passion you have and why you're building this site, or you can just purely have it on that niche-specific site. So, um, you know, what your site's about and all that good stuff. Um, for obvious reasons, it's gonna build trust, so um, they know that, okay, it's a real person that ha can actually resonate with your website and it's just another form of communication as well. So it's not a direct form of communication, but it makes them understand about, you know, you as a person and your website. Contact us. So contact us is just, you know, for them to actually directly communicate with you. So if they ever need to kind of ask a question or, you know, want to kind of build a relationship, you know, you want to have that there. Uh, the bottom two pages, your privacy policy and disclaimer, they're just purely for legal purposes, okay? Um, I mean, I'm sure no one reads that stuff anyway. It's just there for for your protection and uh, Google likes to see those kind of websites as well. So it kind of uh, makes it seem like your website's real and you're there for the long haul rather than um, you know really thin websites where Google thinks that's not not quality and, uh, and yeah, so they kind of push you aside. Okay, so, you know, um, you know, private policy, you can actually just Google it and kind of base yours off another website, it's fine. And uh, disclaimer is pretty much just saying that you're not affiliate and you're going to get commissions and 
you know, really important stuff, okay? But um, I'm sure that's, uh, yeah, you'll be able to capable of doing that. Alright, so when it comes to actually writing the articles, alright, so um, you want to make sure that it's of high quality, and I can't stress enough how important that is, okay? Um, you want to make sure that you do write up for your readers, because I do get a lot of people really confused because, you know, they really desperately want to rank their articles, and they just write their articles for Google, okay? But what they don't realize is, if a person actually reads that article, you think they can actually buy it? You know, it's all about conversions here. Okay, you want to make sure that the reader reads your article, really likes what you write, and then um, trust you to actually trust you enough to actually click on your link and buy something. Okay, so make sure that you know it's very very um, engaging, it's readable. You know, you don't want to be, you don't want to have like you know grammar mistakes all over the place. In saying that, it doesn't have to be perfect. But, you know, just enough to actually under, people understand it. Um, don't get confused with trying to be an expert. So, I mean, keep it simple, right? You don't have to use some fancy words to make your, your article look better. None of that, okay? Just keep it simple, right? People just want to read it and un actually understand it. All right? So, um, that's uh, really important. Uh, your article needs to be 100% unique. Okay? And this goes without saying, okay? If, do, if Google sees that you're, you're copying and pasting from other websites, um... Your 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 article is going to be deemed duplicate, and they're not going to bother giving you any kind of ranking whatsoever. Okay, so uh, be really careful with that. You know, it's okay to actually use other websites as resources. Just don't copy and paste. Okay, just using your own words and um and just you know write it for your readers. Uh, it's it's always good to have it properly structured as well. So you know, have your headings, have images, have um. What are they called? Dot points. Dot points are really good as well, and uh, I mean that—that's really a good strategy for skimmers. And you're always going to get skimmers. Right? I'm, I'm a skimmer. Uh, I'm sure there are other people out there that like to skim through articles as well. So uh, before I actually read an article, I actually you know, scroll down and see what it's about first before I actually read about it. Okay. So if you have it properly structured, um, you know, and then, uh, they can actually see the main points, you're going to pretty much uh, win those skimmers as well. All right. And then uh, if you if you're having a very lengthy article, it's always nice to break it up with images as well. So make sure that obviously the images actually relate to the actual um, content itself. But uh, yeah, like let's say you know your article's three thousand words. Make sure you add an image every you know five hundred words or seven hundred words. Okay, so uh, it's not just all text in front of them. No, they, they get an image. You know, when they actually see an image, it actually gives their eyes a break, and so um, it's really important as well. You don't want to kind of drain your readers. You always want to keep them engaged and uh, make sure they actually go through your whole article. So yeah, so with, with the main article, you want to be looking at at least 2,000 words. Um, you know, how you actually go about it, it's up to you. I mean, uh, it really varies depending on niche. So uh, you know, you just go out there, kind of see what other people are really liking in that particular... So you, uh, you want to know your market, okay? And you want to see what your audience actually likes and see what actually websites are out there that are already doing really well. And um, and kind of base it around that. All right. Um, when it comes to filler articles, you want to do at least you know 700, 500 to seven hundred words. Okay. So not too intense, but enough content there so that you know it's uh, it's at least it's valuable as well. Okay. So enough about writing content. Uh, let's talk about ranking your website. Okay. So I mean this is just a very brief description of how Google actually ranks your website. Um, they actually need to know what your content content's about. Okay, so uh, if you don't make it clear about what your content's about, they're not gonna, they don't know how to rank your website. Okay, um, and then the next part is how well it actually performs. All right, so um, and this is you know they they, they get all these different metrics. Um, there's no actual way of telling a hundred percent on how Google actually goes about this. Uh, you know, it's all about you know testing, tweaking, and actually um, learning more information and then just you know, gathering it all there together and uh, and trying to work around it. Okay, so I mean, there I'm, I'm sure there's a hundreds and hundreds of different ways of Google, like actually Google actually looks into. But I mean, yeah, in most cases, what I'll actually show you is the most part. Okay, so in other words, the main thing they're looking for are on site. So what you actually do within your website, and then there are off site factors where how other websites and other users actually interact with your website. Okay, so. 
Uh, on-site is you know for Google to actually know what your web, uh, what your content's about, and then off-site is how well it performs with the users. That's that's just a really simple way of actually explaining it. So uh, which leads to step five, which is on-site factors. Okay, so on-site factors are pretty much everything done internally. Okay, so this is all within your own power. All right. This is complete on your control, so how well you do it is how well your on-site factors are going to kick in. Okay, so for starters, you want to make sure that you have your title and headings with your keywords in it. Okay, uh, now, it, now at the moment, it's a bit more laxed, relaxed, so you don't have to worry about having your exact keyword in your title. But as long as you have your title uh, keyword variation or your, your exact keywords in your title, that's fine as well. Okay, and... Um, um, the next part is your keyword density. Okay, so KW is just for keyword. Uh, you don't want to make sure, you don't want to spam your keyword everywhere in your content. Um, yeah, it used to work in the past. You know, if you if you really if Google you know pretty much tells what your content's about. If you have like let's say your articles, your article has a thousand words and you write a particular keyword five hundred times. All right, I mean this is obviously really extreme, but Google's going to be like, hey. This site is about this particular keyword. Let's rank it for that, that keyword, okay? But it's not like that anymore. I mean, like I said, you know, uh, Google is always evolving and they're really smart now and they can pick up exactly what your content's about without actually checking your keyword density. So um, be really careful about that. You know, you don't want to spam your keywords. Otherwise, if they do see it as spam, they're actually going to penalize you. So be really careful. Uh, your URL structure is really going to help determine what your website's about as well. Uh, which I'll explain in a bit. Uh, your images and videos. So the types of images and videos you actually use are going to explain what your content's about. Obviously, Google's, Google doesn't actually have eyes, so they can't tell what your image is about. So um, you can actually rename your image, and um, and that will kind of give Google an idea about what your video is about. And the same with YouTube uh, videos as well. So if you decide to embed videos onto your website, um, you know the title of that YouTube video actually matters as well. Um, Interlinking and linking out. So this is not exactly for, um, well, interlinking is not exactly for Google. It's more about keeping your traffic within your website. Okay, so interlinking is pretty much linking one post to another post. Okay, so like you fill an article, somewhere in your fill article, you have a link to your main article. That's what it's called. That's what um, interlinking is all about. Okay, and uh, that's really important because, you know, you want to kind of always... Um, have your users stay on your website as long as possible, okay? Because uh, th these things really matter. Uh, linking out, linking out is um, you actually linking out to other websites, okay? So it's really important that you do link out to high authority websites that re that are related to your website, okay? So that's related to your niche. Uh, what ha what happens is it kind of puts you on par as that website, so it kind of makes you as equal, and uh, and it kind of and Google actually sees your website as a hub. Okay, a hub for information rather than um, trying to game their 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 system. You're actually you know providing information. Okay, they see you as like Wikipedia. Wikipedia does it all the time. You know they always link out to other all sorts of different websites and um and they have a really great interlinking structure as well. So if you're ever going to model off any kind of website, Wikipedia is a great place to model. But um yeah, so make sure you do link out to authority websites because it kind of puts you on par as them. And it shows that you know your your website's about giving information, offering information, not just kind of you know get people to not just a website that's always trying to sell. Um, the last two are bounce rates and page views. So bounce rates is really important because it shows how well your uh, information is actually interacting with the users. So let's say if someone lands on your website and then you know five seconds later they actually close your close your website and or you know leave your website and you know press the back button that actually constitute as a bounce okay and um, that's really bad because because that means that you, your site's either unrelated to the actual search term or it's really bad quality okay so that's really that's you know that's how they see it uh, page views is just you know um, how much content your actual website has so if they're kind of going through a lot of different pages of your website that means your website is really high quality okay and that's really great as well and then last thing is your site load time so um, site speed actually really matters now uh, you know just having your site load you know one second delayed is gonna really have a lot of drop-offs 
So you want to always make sure that you optimize for speed, okay? And there are different, all sorts of different hosting that you can actually um, look into that will help increase that. Okay, so um, I'm just going to quickly jump over to my browser here, and uh, I will give you an example of a um, of uh, on-site optimization. Okay, so I'm just going to click onto this post here. <clears throat> Alrighty, so for starters. Uh, this is the title okay so this is the actual title of your website and let's say that I was actually aiming for dog tricks okay you want to make sure that it's in the title all right and then secondly you want to make sure that it's in the URL okay so this is this is what they actually call a permalink and um, I actually set it up so that it's gonna be like that so what, what I actually did is if you had to actually head over to settings and click on permalinks and you should you should do this you know before you actually do anything so as soon as you do a fresh install of WordPress, this is the first thing you actually should change. Okay, because by default, uh, it will have your domain name, .com, and then your post number. So if you want to do your very first post, it would be P equals 1. All right, and that tells Google nothing. That tells Google nothing about your website. What you actually want is your post name. So as you can see, uh, right now it's actually set as post name. So whatever name I give my post, it's going to end up as my permalink. Okay, so you'll see it over here. So top three amazing dog tricks, okay? And uh, there's a two here for some reason. I think I duplicated that page, so that's why there's a two there. But now that it tells you exactly what you you know your page is about, and then Google Google sees Google will see that and go, hey, you know, this is what this page is about. Let's just give them this ranking. Um, EMDs. So I talked about having a different strategy for EMDs, and um, and it's really important that uh, the reason why EMDs are really hard now because Let's say, for example, you're doing dog tricks and your website's about dogtricks.com forward slash dog trick. Your title's dog trick and everything within your content's dog trick, okay? And that might seem like a good thing because it tells Google exactly what your content's about. But to them, it seems like you're gaming the system. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to be better than the system and they're going to penalize you for that, okay? And that's what they call over optimization. And I believe I'll actually go through in the next slide. So um, that's that. So. Anyway, for starters, we, we talk about title. So this is the actual title. You want to make sure that your keyword's in the title. So that's there. Uh, it's in your link, so that's fine. And then, uh, actually, this is a bad post to actually go for. Let's see if I can find a better example. I think, yeah, let's just do this one. Sorry, I do apologize. So um, let's see. Okay, so for this one, let's do a trick photography guide. So that's the actual um, keyword that I'll, I'll, I'll be going for. Uh, as you can see in the permalink, I shorten it to just trick photography guide because otherwise, you know, best photo manipulation book was too long. So um, I, I like to keep it short. Um, as you can see, this little green highlighted here is my my um, interlinking. So I actually interlink to a, another post. Um, this is what you call a header. Okay, so as you see, this is bigger than the rest. Uh, you want to make sure that you know you have your keyword in the header at least once. That's exactly what I did. Uh, you want to have your, you know, keyword within the actual content, but you got to be really careful about abusing that as well. Okay, so um, that's that. Uh, let's see if I actually rename this image. Okay, I didn't actually name that image, but uh, when I, when you have any kind of image, you actually rename it to your keyword as well. So let's say you know for alternative text, you can actually write in <coughs> trick photography guide as well. Okay, and that will tell, I obviously didn't do that right. And that will tell Google that what the image is about. Okay? And that's going to help uh, kind of distinguishing what your page is about. And then um, at the bottom here, I actually installed SEO Yoast. And you can actually find out exactly, you know, what kind of percentage your density is, your keyword density. Okay, so I've got, let's say, under 300 words. Okay, and uh, if I type in my focus keyword, which is trick photography guide, It'll say that I've got it in the content twice. So, you know, 2 divided by 300 is, I don't know, 1.5%, I think it was. But yeah, and so it's not, you know, obviously that's fine because, like, um, you know, I didn't actually um, overly spam it. You want, you know, you want to make sure that your your actual con your actual keyword that you're writing within your content is less than, I don't know, 3 or 4%, okay? So as long as you don't spam it everywhere, you should be fine, okay? And um, as you can see, you can actually, SEO title is, oops. So this is the actual title that is shown on Google and the meta description is um, 
the description within Google. Okay, so this is the title and this is the description. So that's that's how I kind of use Yoast. I don't really bother with um, you know how well how their, their page analysis, but yeah, that's pretty much how I kind of use it. Okay, so um, yeah, pretty much everything's fine. So yeah, so that that's just the basics of uh, how you actually go about on-site SEO. Uh, lastly, or not lastly, second last is step six, which is off-site factors. Okay, like I mentioned before, it's how your site actually interacts with other websites, and this is extremely important as well. Okay, um, you know that Google actually takes in you know what kind of traffic referrals you're actually getting. So you know, um, let's say you know another site is recommending your stuff. And they they put, and they have a link in their website that actually leads back to your website. That's actually called a backlink, okay? A backlink, and they're actually referring traffic to your website. So um, that's a you know that's a really great factor uh, in terms of um interaction. So you know if your content's really good and it's being shared from other from other websites, Google Google's gonna see that and say, hey, this website is actually really valuable. Let's um push up the rankings. All right. Because it's all about quality, right? So Google wants to have the best for its customers, and that's what their main—that's their business. Uh, another thing they actually look into is the social signals. So, um, especially you know now it's the world of social media. Everything, you know, everyone has a, a social media account. So, uh, you know, if people are liking, sharing your content, that really shows that you got good quality content as well. So that's really important. And then another factor is your website reputation. So. It's a bit harder to actually have a reputation when you're just building new uh, new website, but this is just a fact that they actually look into. So, you know, if your website has a previous um, really high trust code, and they really, you know, believe that your th your site's really high authority, they're going to give you an extra boost. All right, let's just face it; that's how it works. Okay, so just a quick um, demonstration on what backlinks actually are. So, uh, as you can see, um, this this website here is a different kind of website. This is your niche site. So a website will actually kind of post a link that takes them to your website, and that's what they call a backlink. Okay, keep in mind that not all backlinks are actually equal. Okay, they're not. Uh, some some links actually carry a lot more weight, and some none at all. So as you can see, if you have a really good web, uh, reputation website that actually points a link to your website, that's a really strong backlink. Whereas if it's a brand new website that has no kind of um, a, uh, no kind of appearance, no nothing, right? Um, and you get a backlink from there, it's really weak. Okay, so so if you get yeah, so that's that's just a, a few different types of backlinks and how the weight actually carries. Um, another term for weight is link juice. Okay, and it's pretty much the life energy of a backlink. Uh, if you know if uh, that juice actually gets carried throughout all your websites. So let's say if this website here posts a link to your website, and then your website goes to another website. That juice actually gets passed along. Okay, that weight gets passed along. So uh, that's why it's really important to actually interlink your stuff so that the juice actually stays within your website. So that's just yeah, that's just another way of actually keeping um, all the power within your website. Uh, another terminology that you need to understand is anchor text. Okay, anchor text. So um, it's pretty much just the hyperlinked words. So generally they're blue and underlined. So under here is an example of an anchor text. So learn more about your niche here. Okay, um, that tells Google exactly what that backlink's about. You know, if if you have a backlink that's just click here, it doesn't really tell Google much at all, right? Uh, it's really general anchor text, and uh, it tells you nothing. And so, you know, people have been really abusing this anchor text as well. So let's say you're trying to target dog tricks, right, as your as your keyword. Uh, people tend to kind of abuse that anchor text and get other people to actually put um, dog tricks. As the anchor text, so um, and that gets really abused. And anytime anything gets abused, Google's going to come up with a new algorithm that kind of uh, stops that in its tracks. Okay, so you got to be really careful with the anchor text now. So it's really important to always diversify your anchor text. Okay, so um, that's uh, yeah, it's really important. So as as long as you don't have you know less than ten percent of your actual keyword, you should be fine. So um, speaking of backlinks, these are the different types of actual backlinks. So, like I said, you know, not all backlinks are actually equal. So, let's say um, you get web directories are pretty much like your, your your yellow pages. Okay, so it's like a yellow pages of your on a website, and it pretty much directs. You know, people actually go there as a resource to actually find out which kind of website is related related to a certain topic. Uh, they used to work really well in the past as well. 
Uh, not so much now, but it's still a great way to actually get traffic. Okay, so uh, like I said, it's not always about trying to get rank factors. Uh, if you can get traffic, if you can get a link, if that link actually drives traffic to your website, then that to me is a really good backlink as well. Um, blog commenting. Blog commenting is just pretty much you know going into a blog and then commenting. Uh, you you want to make sure that it is a relevant niche. So you know if your if your site's about dog training, and uh, you want to make sure you comment on a blog that's about dog training. Okay, so um, that goes with that saying. And usually when you write a comment, you be able to actually put in your name, your actual website, and your name would be the actual anchor text. Guest posting. Guest posting is a more of an advanced one. It's actually you know building relationships with a blogger and then asking that blogger if you can write a post on their on their blog. Okay, and obviously that 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 particular post would be pointing back to your website as well. But it's another great way of driving heaps of traffic. Forum posting, not so much for um, ranking factors, but a great way to actually drive traffic to your website. Okay, so you know you, you can jump on a niche related way, um, niche related forum. Start giving value, and if anyone's asking a specific question, you actually point them to your website. Simple as that. Uh, web 2.0s. Uh, web 2.0s are like your uh, websites that not hosted on personal accounts. So like um, uh, blog Blogspot is one. Um, you know, Squidoo and all those kind of like websites where it's not actually uh, private hosted, but it's actually it's like a it's like social kind of website. Okay, I think that's the best way to kind of explain it. And uh, yeah, and you can get actually um, links from that. Uh, social bookmarking is like your um, it's like a safe keep a place where you know people saw their links, and that's um, a great way to get traffic. Authority websites that goes without saying. So um, authority websites are like you know Wikipedia, uh, like your news news kind of CNN kind of websites. Um, they're really high authority, and if you can get a link from them, that's a really kind of powerhouse kind of backlink, and that'll really push up your your rankings, and uh, obviously your social media as well. Okay. And uh, so yeah, so now it's actually time to actually introduce you to Google's zoo animals. Okay, so uh, for whatever reason, Google actually likes to name their algorithms as animals. Don't ask me why. I mean that's just their thing. Uh, pretty much what these animals do is they police the internet. Okay, they're going to go out throughout the whole internet and actually see what's deemed um, high quality through Google's eyes. Okay, so the algorithms are like you know this. It's like maths. A whole bunch of um, a formula, a whole bunch of formulas, and uh, they kind of work out whether your website's good quality or not. Okay, so obviously, you know, if your if your website looks spammy or it's spammed in any way, they're going to punish your website, right? They're going to penalize it and um, and put you down their ranks. And uh, so, the goal for Google Zoo Animals is to provide high quality searches for the users, because after all, you know, Google's business is um, search engine. Okay, so they always want the best for the users. And if all these spammy websites are ranking on Google, uh, a lot of the users are going to be put off. Okay, so that's that's the main goal for um, these algorithms. Again, you know, Google's always evolving and they're always changing the algorithms, and uh, and so you can never really know exactly what the algorithm is about. Okay, no one knows the best method. There's no 100% way to actually rank on Google. Okay, there's no black or white method. It's all about you know. Um, Evolving and changing with the algorithms, okay, which leads us to the next slide, which is our job. So our job is always to be informed, all right. Always uh, update yourself with information on you know what's working, what's not, and pretty much adapt to the changes. And that's that's all we can ever do, right? You're never gonna be able to find a a, a one hit formula that's gonna cover everything, okay. There's too many things that Google actually looks into, and uh, and unless you're actually working within Google, then you're probably not gonna find that information. But there are important things that you can already avoid right now that I can tell you. Okay, so obviously crummy or duplicated content. If you have any kind of any kind of um, duplicated content, then uh, don't even bother with it. Uh, they will pick it up. Over optimizing. So I kind of explained this a bit earlier. So over optimizing is pretty much you know you trying to game the system and spamming your your keywords everywhere. Okay, so uh, they're gonna see it as spam and they're just gonna punish your website. And you could do it both on site and off site. So on-site is you know having your title, your um, exact match domain, and spam your content, uh, spam your keyword throughout the content. That's over-optimizing. 
uh, in terms of offsides is anchor text. So if your anchor text, all of your anchor text are revolving around that one keyword, that's a bit sus to Google as well. Um, spammy backlinks. This is a really important one. So if you're getting a whole bunch of backlinks from any kind of forum websites or uh, any kind of like adult websites where it doesn't really make sense, um, you, you can either, they, they might ignore it. They'll probably just ignore that backlink. So that backlink won't, won't um, count for anything at all. Okay, so that's just uh, just be a waste of time and um, and it's, you know, an effort. So yeah, so um, that's uh, another trick. And uh, doing anything too fast, too many times too fast is always a big indicator as well. So um, the main goal for Google is to actually look for websites that appear natural. Okay, so if you can do as natural, be as natural as you can, and um, you know, that you're on a good path. Okay, so finally we're down to the last step, which is the monetization, okay? So here is where we're actually gonna be our payday, okay? So this is where we're actually gonna, how we're actually gonna make money from our website. Um, obviously, for starters, you know, it's affiliate products. Uh, how are you actually gonna promote that affiliate products? You can actually do, you can write up reviews. So, um, you know, you can actually write a certain uh, ebook review, right? And try to rank for that. Uh, you can actually do a different way where you actually provide good content so you can actually rank for a certain keyword that that it's um that's informative that leads to your product review you can do that um you can actually do banner ads so you can actually place banner ads within your website that's promoting that product um that's the same with cpa offers as well so uh, it works really well if you know you've got a cpa offer that you know that really converts and have those banner ads all around your website you know that's a that's a great way to actually monetize your Google AdSense. So if you don't want to do any of the advertising yourself, you can actually let Google advertise for you. So um, what they'll do is they'll put all these banners onto your website and uh, whoever clicks through it, you actually get paid a certain commission for it as well. So there's that. You can rent out your space. So um, instead of actually putting up the banners yourself, you can um, people can pay you to actually um, put their own banners on. Okay, that's what I mean by renting your own space. Um, capturing leads, capturing leads is a huge one as well. So um, you want to capture the lead, build your list and um, email market. So um, Chuck actually kind of walks you through really great detail on this, and uh, uh, he's really, you know, good at um, building lists and actually communicating with the email, uh, with the list as well. So that's a, that's something huge that you should look forward to, and um, I'm sure Chuck's gonna do some sort of training video for you guys. Or you can actually promote your own product. Okay, so you know if you write up an an ebook on a particular niche. You can sell that. Um, you, you can build a membership site. Any kind of any kind of product you decide to create, you can actually promote that as well. So um, that's a few ways of actually monetizing. There are a lot of other methods, but it's very advanced. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep it simple, keep it cool, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all it. So um, yeah, so I really hope you kind of enjoyed this uh, long video. Uh, I did kind of warn you that it was gonna take some quite some time. It is a mini course, so you know I was trying to squeeze as much as I can within the time constraints that I had. But uh, yeah, I hope you kind of learned something out of it, you know, or, you know, I hope you're ready to actually take action, got all those notes and uh, ready to go. And all, all it takes is just actually implementing it. I mean, it's, like I said, it's quite a simple process. It's all about testing and tweaking and just getting your feet wet, okay? So it's nothing more important than actually going there, going out there and actually trying it. Okay, so learning is one thing, but you have to implement, okay? Uh, in saying that, um, Super Affiliate Academy has a lot more in-depth training on you know niche research, uh, keyword research, how to actually use important um, plugins and other resources that I actually go through as well. Uh, obviously, you know, like I said, with the time constraint that I had, I can't really go through everything. But I mean, what I actually taught you today was more than enough for you to actually go on and um, get started. Uh, within Super Affiliate Academy, though, you know, it's I actually show you how to actually research to write your articles and how to get them resourced as well. Not resourced, outsourced, that's the right word. And a few other hidden strategies to rank faster as well. So look, uh, you know, if you really like this content, you're gonna love what's inside Super Affiliate. I mean, this was just one strategy that's within Super Affiliate Academy. Uh, you know, look, I, I do recommend you check it out. Obviously it's my own product. Uh, Chuck and I worked really hard to actually build it up. So you can actually get full access to it for just 30 days for just $1. So. You know why not right you know you can try before you buy okay so it's like you know test driving your car uh all we're asking is for one dollar and uh see for yourself okay so 
again, uh, this is Andy, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the content, and uh, I look forward to actually talking to you soon. Catch you later.